Welcome to the Lean Blog Podcast. Visit our website at www.leanblog.org. Now, here's your host, Mark Graben. I want maybe probe in a couple of the examples you shared of, of elegance from these different arenas. And what I found really helpful and inspiring about the book was that it made me think that I would read and stop and, and, and think about my own examples. And um, so I found it a very thought-provoking book in that sense. It's not a strictly prescriptive, you know, here are the eight steps to, uh, to becoming right. elegant. It's more complex, but, you know, I'd say more artful than that, that, um, you know, really is um, a, lot, a lot of thought-provoking ideas that you pulled from different areas. And before we talk about some of those examples, could, could you share a little bit more? We've talked about um, what you call the stop doing philosophy and how that's elegant. So I was wondering if you could share some of the origins of, of that approach, how you found that. Well, yeah, the origins for me uh, came from a gentleman by the name of Jim Collins, um, who I'm sure your audience will recognize as a business guru and author of a couple of great books, Built to Last and, and most recently, uh, Good to Great. But in the course of it, about halfway between my tenure at Toyota, where I was sort of struggling with the original assignment, I read an end of the year uh, USA Today forum piece that he had written. And it was titled, Next Year, Consider a Stop Doing List. And it sort of caught me up short, because what do we do at the, the beginning of every year? We set big, hairy, stretch goals and things that we're going to accomplish that year, New Year's resolutions. And the gist of his message was, well, consider things to not do in the coming year. And he cited an example that had changed his life where he had left Stanford as a, as a young MBA and he had done what most of us do when we leave MBA school, which is enter a fast-paced career and start climbing the corporate ladder. And he was doing that at Hewlett Packard. And he went back to visit Stanford. Uh, and one of his favorite instructors who taught uh, personal creativity in business um, sort of took him by the scruff of the neck and shook him and said, you know, Jim, listen, yeah, you, might be, you might be going down the wrong path here. Um, let me ask you something. What if you had $20 million free and clear, but you only had 10 years left to live? What would you do? More importantly, what would you not do? And that really truly did what you just said, which was to made him, it made him stop and think about what was most important to him, um, how he used his time wisely, um, the things that mattered most to him. And it also became a screen uh, by which he was able to identify companies that he considered to be not just good, but great. Um, and that whole notion of whatever your strategies, goals, and objectives are, getting rid of the bottom 20% forever, which is what he prescribed, was world-changing for me. And it made me stop and think about the world of Toyota as not what they were doing, but what they weren't doing. And it also opened my eyes to the rest of, of, of the world in terms of ideas, strategies, solutions, where sometimes it's better to not rush in and act because when we do that, we inevitably add things, not all of them value adding, but to stop and think and possibly stop doing. So that's, that's sort of the genesis of, of that whole stop doing strategy. And for the next five years, it became the lens through which I looked at the world. Yeah. No, I was um, wondering if you could talk about Toyota for a minute because uh, – New generation, I guess, third gen Prius is coming out, and there was some talk, uh, I believe, from Toyota executives saying that they had started to get a little bit bloated in terms of the features that they were offering: solar panels um, to, to help run cooling systems. The cost had gotten a little out of hand. Um, but prior to that, you, you have good examples of um, different product where Toyota had applied this uh, stop doing this this elegant type design method in a different way. If you could talk about that. Well, sure. Well, the, the, probably the easiest one to talk about is their newest brand, which is the Scion brand, which is meant to be their uh, youth brand. Several years ago, they recognized that their customers were growing up. And by the year 2020, um, their customer base was no longer going to be the same. And so they better figure out a way to address that 
those those that new generation, that Gen Y buyer, as it were. And they tried and failed miserably at trying to market the Toyota brand to the young folks. You know, hey, I don't care if you stick it on my cell phone. I don't care if it's in you know this magazine or the other. It's still a Toyota. That's what my mom drives, and I'm not going to drive it. So you better come up with something different. And so that required Toyota really to go back to the ground floor in terms of observing their new customer and really getting to know their customer. And you know the the term there is is Genshi Kimbutsu, which is get out there and and truly become the customer, infiltrate them, and involve them in the design of the of the product or service you're trying to to uh, deploy. And that's what they did. And they came out with a, a, a very Spartan vehicle, the Scion XB, looks like a toaster, um, a very boxy thing, um, not something probably you and I would want to drive, but the, the important part and what you're getting to is that they had left a lot of things out. They didn't have many features, um, didn't have a lot of bells and whistles uh, to the vehicles, a $15,000 vehicle. Um, and but what they had discovered in getting out into the marketplace was that this this new young generation buyer is all about me and they want to personalize things and that's what they allowed this cart to done to it not only could you have factory options um, but it left open the aftermarket and that's what the kids did they spent another 15 grand on the car customizing it um, making it their own, putting TVs and flat panel screens and uh, DVD burners and uh, sound systems like you wouldn't believe into it and really truly made the vehicle quite successful. But it was, they had removed not just the options and accessories, but they sort of took um, the Apple iPhone strategy, which was don't market this. Um, the, the young generation doesn't want to be pushed. Uh, they want to discover for themselves, and so they planted the. Uh, they didn't have a big advertising campaign. They planted the cars at uh, extreme sporting events and urban art shows, and of all places, raves, and let the young folks discover for themselves the vehicle. Yeah, that's a very innovative approach, and uh, yeah, I don't recall any of the uh, the big three, the Detroit three, taking creative approaches like that. So maybe that's just part of. Uh, maybe a symptom of, uh, of what's gotten them stuck in uh, some bad times. Yeah. Um, but uh, hope, you know, I, I, like I said, I really enjoyed the book. Maybe we can do another podcast where we can share um, a couple other examples um, of, of elegance. I like the way you shared examples from different um, fields and, and different industries. Um, so if you're willing to do that, maybe we can do another session. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for listening. This has been the Lean Blog Podcast. For lean news and commentary updated daily, visit www.leanblog.org. If you have any questions or comments about this podcast, email mark at leanpod.